As most designers probably know, plate testing is a key process in game design. However, it is crucial that you do it in the correct way as it can be useless if it is done wrong. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the most important things to do when playtesting your game and how to take the most advantage of your playtester's feedback so that your game can improve. Keep in mind that these techniques are what has helped me in my own playtests and are not intended to be universal. What might work for me might not work for you. Before I start the video, I want to remind you to please subscribe and hit the bell if you enjoy this kind of content. Let's dive right in. First of all, when you're playtesting, you want to ask good questions. This seems like a no-brainer because after all, who wants to ask dumb questions? However, when you're asking questions during a playtest, you want to get the most information out of a player. The best way to guarantee this is to avoid yes or no questions. If you do ask them, you will not get any deeper insights or information, as you'll reach a dead end in their answers. You also want to avoid being too leading. Let's say that, for example, you ask someone if they find your game fun. By asking that question, you are already telling the player how they're supposed to feel by playing the game. This will influence and inform their decision on how to answer, making your soul less trustworthy. A better question will be to ask them how they feel while playing this game. This question arrives at the same result, which is getting to know what they truly feel, without prompting them to say it's fun. If the game is, in fact, a fun game, they will volunteer that feedback candidly when asked. A good idea is to also follow the question, asking them to explain why. This helps keep the conversation going and for people to tell you what things specifically are making them feel that way. This is far more valuable than a simple yes or no, don't you think? Another important thing that you can do when having a playtest is having them talk out loud as they play. This helps you hear them walk through their emotions, thoughts, and mental process to understand how a player is thinking. As a designer, it helps you to know if they are reacting the way you originally hoped when designing the game. This can provide very useful information, especially when you are unsure if something in your game is being communicated properly. It will also help you learn whether players are getting the wrong idea about the objective of your game. Unfortunately, games don't come with a designer bundled with their game to solve all of your questions and problems as you play, like the Microsoft Paperclip. So, it is very important for you to make sure that you're not communicating with the playtester at all while they're playing. Let them figure it out or not. Either way, it's valuable feedback to observe and just let them play and see what they do, how they react or what they do or don't understand. The key is to never tell them anything. If you feel the need to tell them where to go or how to do something, this is an indicator that your game design needs improvement and you'll need to go back to the drawing board in order to make that part more evident. One really good tip that also happens to be really hard to master is to play test by yourself. Some time ago, I heard this is the technique that Shigeru Miyamoto uses for playtesting, but I never found any good evidence on that, so take it with a grain of salt. The idea here is to play your game and erase your brain. You have to get rid of everything you know about your game and essentially play it as if it were the first time you have seen this game. It is hard at first, but with practice, you should be able to get better at it. It sounds crazy, but just like meditation, I suppose practice makes perfect. This is a great way to play test when you don't have anybody close to you. However, keep in mind that this is not a substitute for actually having play testers. You should always try to find people to play test with every now and then. When a play tester has played your game once, the next time, they will have a certain expectation when playing which might influence their feedback. The best scenario is to have both types of playtesters, those who have played your game and those who haven't. This helps make sure that your game is understood by new players and it is still engaging for players who know the game. My pro tip is to keep a balance of how many new playtesters you have each time you playtest. Ideally, you will have at least half new and half old users in order to have good data about your game from both groups of playtesters. Remember to get players from your target audience when playtesting. This is essential in having a successful playtest, because a person who plays sports game is not going to think the same way as someone who plays first-person shooters. The point of this exercise is to get to know your audience and make sure that your playtesters are interested in the type of game you're making. How can you keep track of everything that happens? 
The best thing that you can do in a playtest is to take notes, or even better, to record the session if your playtesters consent to it. Everything a player says or thinks can be useful for your game. There are some companies who record player faces through gameplay, to see how people react to different gameplay moments. It is likely you won't have all those resources, so the important takeaways is to always pay attention to what your playtester is feeling or thinking while playing. Little things like facial expressions or reactions will help you gather a ton of very useful feedback that can be implemented right away. The last thing you should do is to reward your playtesters. This can be in the form of a gift card, inviting them to lunch or something else, just some kind of appreciation for them to be taking the time of their day to actually be with you and play your game, however so it might be. It takes a lot of effort and concentration to be able to get feedback on something you are playing, so be nice and maybe they will be able to play this for you again. While playtesting is great, every now and then you're going to get playtesters whose feedback is just not worth it, so you have to be cautious about which feedback you take and which one you don't. They might be asking for things that don't make sense or distract you from your objective. If they aren't getting the point of your game and going on tangents, perhaps they aren't part of your target audience, even if they look like they were on paper. Regardless of the feedback you get, try to be open-minded and welcome any feedback at all times. Knowing what it is or is not useful is a delicate dance. At the end of the day, I would recommend trusting your gut to know which feedback to take into consideration and which you shouldn't take, but keep in mind. If you continuously get the same feedback you don't want to listen to, it might be time to consult another designer for their point of view, to find where the disconnect is between what you want and what people are experiencing. And that's it you guys, thank you so much for watching. What other techniques do you use when playtesting your game? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, please like and share it with your friends. See you next time!